Today I will be doing something that has almost become a challenge on the internet at this point. Manufacturing a miniature Mandalorian helmet from an acorn nut. It was harder than it initially seemed given that I was using some quite advanced machinery compared to other people doing this. But see for yourself. As always, like the video, it really helps me a lot. Overall I used two bonus end mills for the finishing work and a 10mm end mill for the roughing process as there was not much material to remove. I had to use long colored holders to clear the chuck. The tool had to stick out enough that the holder itself was able to clear the workpiece in the machining steps. To get the offsets in X and Y, a 3D edge finder was used. I initially planned to go for a setup where the Nuts M24 thread pressed it against the tube, but eventually decided to center it on the thread. Centering a workpiece on a thread is not ideal, but in exchange for the additional clearance, it seemed well worth it. Now a smaller M10 thread is responsible for holding the piece, pulling on a M24 insert. This way I was able to use a nut on the 4th axis back side to tighten everything. The fourth axis is mounted in line with the X axis. For my reference tool I used a 3D edge finder. I used a fixed dial gouge to set my Z offset. The thread extended far into the nut giving me not much material to work with. I got the model for the helmet from GrabCat and used the most cylindrical looking one I could find. I modeled the acorn nut as close to the original as possible and traced the round part from a photo. Then it was time to set a zero for my A-axis. For Y I averaged two sides and X used the tip of the acorn nut as zero. Now let's get to the machining process. Some of the operations are hard to see due to cooling fluid, so I'll subsidize with 3D simulations. I roughed the part using the 10mm end. I left 2 tenths of a millimeter stock and there were still large places where no material was taken away. For the cat and cam work I used Fusion 360, 
so I tried out the 4th axis toolpath for most of the finishing work. The workpiece rotates, with only the Z axis adjusting for the contour. I did not start at the tip of the helmet because I was using a Y offset to get a more ideal machining position for my bonus end mill. Bonus end mills perform way better when you are not working with the tip but with one of its sides. My Y axis was offset in the wrong direction in this case. I machined the tip without any offset as it would leave it partially unmachined. With my last tool, the 2mm bonus end mill, I wanted to machine out details such as the visor and so on. Therefore, the part orients itself in the fourth axis and is then machined with a normal 3D toolpath. The tool is then repositioned and so on. Overall I was happy with the result as it was my first try using the A-axis. My setup was accurate as flaws from the 3D planning translated one to one to the finished part. If you like these kinds of videos, go check out my other content. Recently I machined a new cooling fan for my lathe and made a deadlifting barbell for my brother. Thanks for watching.